Poor Things. We are about to watch a movie called Poor Things where a little girl's mind rests in an adult woman's body. Watch how people use her innocence against her. An eccentric surgeon transplants the brain of an unborn child into her deceased mother's body. A girl in a blue dress jumps off a bridge. The scene turns black and white, revealing a girl named Bella Baxter awkwardly playing the piano, watched by a disfigured man, Godwin Baxter. At lunch, Bella eats messily and spits out food. Godwin, one of London's top surgeons, kisses her forehead and goes to work, followed by Bella calling him Papa. Godwin's students are more intrigued by his appearance than his lessons, except Max, who genuinely admires him. Godwin invites Max to assist in a special project. At home, Bella breaks dishes and punches Max in the nose. Godwin explains that Bella, recovering from a brain injury, has the developmental level of a two-year-old. Godwin suggests Max observe Bella's progress, and Max eagerly agrees. The next day, Max follows Bella, noting everything she does. One evening, Godwin reads Bella a bedtime story, revealing he took her in after her parents died in South America. This sparks Bella's interest in the outside world, and she eagerly studies maps with Max. Wanting more, Bella climbs stairs to view the city and throws a tantrum, demanding a walk. Godwin reluctantly agrees, and they travel to the countryside in a mechanical carriage. Bella, amazed by the leaves, wallows in them. During a picnic, Godwin reveals his father disfigured him through experiments. On the way home, Bella demands another city walk and attacks Godwin when refused. He calms her with chloroform. Max later finds papers about Bella's experiment in Godwin's office. Godwin explains he transplanted the brain of an unborn child into a deceased mother's body, resulting in Bella's childlike behavior. The next day, Bella experiences puberty and tries to comfort the maid, but Max explains it's immoral. Godwin and Max discuss the incident, and Godwin suggests Max marry Bella. Max is surprised, assuming Godwin intended to keep Bella for himself, but Godwin reveals his reproductive system was damaged by his father's experiments, and his feelings for Bella are paternal. Max proposes to Bella, who eagerly accepts, excited about their future. To finalize the paperwork, Godwin invites a lawyer named Duncan Wynn. While Godwin reviews the prenup, Duncan sneaks around the house and quickly charms the naive Bella. That night, he sneaks onto Bella's balcony and persuades her to meet on the roof, promising to free her and take her on a trip. Bella informs Godwin of her plans to leave. Despite his attempts to dissuade her, she remains adamant. While packing, Max tries to stop her, but Bella calms him with chloroform. Godwin sews money into the hem of her dress, kisses her on the forehead, and lets her go. The scene transitions to Lisbon, where Bella and Duncan dine in restaurants and engage in what she calls furious jumps. One day, while Duncan sleeps, Bella explores the city, admiring its sights. After overeating pastries, she returns to the hotel. Concerned about Bella's disappearance, Duncan paces nervously until she returns. He asks her not to go out alone again. At a restaurant meeting with his clients, Bella embarrasses Duncan by spitting out food and attempting to punch a child. He takes her aside to explain proper behavior. Back at the hotel, a lady mistakes Bella for someone named Victoria, but Bella corrects her. The next day, Bella and Duncan go to a restaurant where she hears music for the first time and dances wildly. Duncan joins her, and their dance turns into a fight when another man winks at Bella. Later, Duncan notices a man's signature on Bella's thighs, realizing she ran away again. Unable to control her, he tricks her into hiding in a trunk, and she wakes up on a cruise ship, trapped. Meanwhile, in London, Godwin collapses during a lecture. Upon waking, he lies, claiming he drank too much. Knowing his time is limited, he asks Max to help find a new body. Together, they revive another girl named Felicity, but her development is much slower than Bella's. Resentful of Duncan for kidnapping her, Bella immerses herself in reading instead of engaging in furious jumps. Gaining new knowledge, Bella meets two passengers, a straightforward woman named Martha and a cynic named Harry. Bella confides in them about Duncan, wishing she could throw him overboard. Their conversation is interrupted by Duncan, who proposes marriage, but Bella reminds him she is engaged to Max. Bella spends more time with Martha and Harry, discussing complex philosophical issues, which displeases Duncan. Frustrated, Duncan throws her books overboard and goes to the casino. At one point, he even tries to theatrically throw Martha overboard but is stopped. Disturbed by philosophical ideas, Bella visits Harry, questioning his belief that all humans are cruel animals. Instead of arguing, 
Harry suggests a walk in Alexandria. From a restaurant balcony, he shows her a poor area where people are starving. Traumatized, Bella tries to jump down to help, but Harry stops her. Returning to the ship, Bella finds Duncan dead drunk after winning a large sum at the casino. She collects the money to donate it to charity, but is stopped by sailors who promise to give the money to the poor. Naively trusting them, Bella believes them. Back in the cabin, Bella tells Duncan she gave away all the money, which infuriates him. The captain, learning they are penniless, orders them to disembark at the nearest port. They are dropped off in Paris. Bella volunteers to find a hotel that will let them stay for free, leading her to a brothel. An elderly lady offers her a way to earn some money, and Bella agrees. After earning money and realizing not all men are as skilled as Duncan, she returns with a bag of eclairs. When Duncan finds out how she earned the money, he becomes enraged, calling it the worst thing she could have done. Realizing Duncan does not share her thirst for experimentation, Bella uses her father's money to buy him a ticket home. Duncan grabs the money and leaves. After some thought, Bella returns to the brothel, determined to get a job. She is happily accepted and begins her path to becoming a courtesan. Between clients, Bella visits the anatomical theater to study medicine. During one visit, she encounters Duncan, who tearfully begs her to return, but she drives him away. Meanwhile, in London, Godwin asks Max to perform surgery on him. Max discovers Godwin has an inoperable tumor. Knowing his days are numbered, Godwin asks Max to find Bella. Max's search leads him to Duncan, who, after calling Bella the devil in the flesh, reveals her location. Receiving the news, Bella returns to London. Bella immediately confronts Godwin about her C-section and her missing baby. Godwin confesses to what he did to her and her baby, sending Bella into an existential crisis. Max proposes to marry her, pulling her out of the crisis. Days later, Godwin walks Bella down the aisle, but their wedding is interrupted by General Alfie, who claims Bella is his wife, Victoria Blessington. Determined to uncover her past, Bella agrees to return home with him. During the drive, General Alfie brandishes a gun, fearing a servant uprising. At dinner, he reveals their shared love for cruelty, but admits Victoria hated the child she was carrying for him. Learning about Bella's past as a prostitute, he plans to suppress her libido. The next day, Bella overhears General Alfie and the doctor planning to drug and circumcise her. Unwilling to accept this fate, Bella confronts Alfie, but is threatened at gunpoint. In a moment of desperation, she throws the drugged cocktail into Alfie's face, causing him to shoot himself accidentally. Bella rushes Alfie to Max, who removes the bullet and stops the bleeding. Bella then finds Godwin's old notes and decides to complete the surgery herself. She lies beside Godwin as he passes away, bidding him farewell. In the final scene, Bella relaxes in the garden with Felicity, whose motor skills are improving. Their peace is briefly interrupted by Alfie, now brain damaged, peacefully grazing nearby.